In this short video, I'll give a very high level introductory overview of the foundational storage concepts that you need in all areas of system design and will help you understand some of the advanced design concepts I discuss in my channel. Now, you might be already familiar to some of these concepts I discuss in this video. Regardless, it's going to be useful to review these concepts and their importance in system design. So let's begin. Whenever you design a system, it requires some form of a story. Go ahead and imagine any system that you interact with, be it Facebook, Google, Amazon, Netflix, or any large or small system. It requires storage, be it storing user information such as your name, date of birth, or maybe your credit card information. Or maybe you want to store something about the system itself, and this is where database comes into play. A database serves two primary purposes, store data and retrieve data. You can also say writing data and reading data, or setting data and getting data, recording data and querying data. All these word spheres can be used interchangeably. One common misconception about database is people thinking it of some sort of magical box with all the information which lives somewhere. In reality, a database is just a server. You can in fact take any computer or laptop and make it a database. If you think about it, on your computer, you can save and retrieve data, you can write files, you can read files. You can set up your computer in such a way that other clients can communicate and request to write or read data. So your machine can in fact become a database for another system. Now there is one important concept which you need to be aware of when it comes to storage or databases. And that is persistence or the persistence of the data stored in the database. People tend to assume that if you store data in a database and then there is a power or network outage, once everything is back online, that data will still be there. A lot of databases do ensure that data is stored or persisted, but it isn't always correct. And this leads us to discuss a couple of more fundamental things in storage, disk and memory. Now, if you have a database server and if database writes data to disk, that data will persist even if the database server goes down. It's just like you saving a file on your computer. If you shut down your computer or if your computer crashes, that files will still be there in the disk unless the disk itself is physically damaged. In contrast, if your database writes data in memory, for example, if you are storing data in an array or hash table, if the database server is rebooted, the array or hash table will no longer hold that data. The main reason in-memory data is used is because it is much faster than reading data from disk. And this is something I have discussed in my latency and throughput video. So to reiterate, if you store data in disk, it will persist even if the database server goes down. If you write data in memory, it will be fast, but data will not persist when the database server goes down. Now storage is very large subject and complex one when designing systems. There are hundreds of database offerings from relational to NoSQL databases. Some of that I have covered in my CAP theorem video where I discuss trade-offs when choosing a specific database. Here in this video, we have just scratched the surface of database storage. In my future video, I'll further discuss the types of databases, relational and NoSQL in context of system design. If you have found this video informative, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing.